Hey everyone, my name is Chris from Create Daily. Today I'm going to show you how to easily create this fun match cut animation using Adobe After Effects. Now there's a good chance you've seen this effect done before in a documentary or historical recap. It's a really fun concept and I'm going to show you a few tips on how to make it your own. If you like what you see in today's tutorial, drop a comment or smash that sub button. Now let's get started with finding our assets. So you're probably asking yourself, where can I even find archival newspaper assets? Well, I have the answer for you. That is here on the Library of Congress's website. They say here that these are free to use. You have a little bit of everything here, all filtered by different categories. And they actually have a newspaper categories. And for this specific tutorial, I wanted to focus on battleships. So I'm just gonna type in battleships here. And you see when um, I come in, they have all of these assets and newspapers and whatnot on battleships and you see everything highlighted here. Now this is the really cool part. You know, these are Some of these are newspapers that are over hundred years old and I'll click on one and everything that mentions battleships is actually highlighted for us, which is super helpful for us for this tutorial. Now there's different ways you can view these assets and then different ways you can download these assets. And a uh, quick trick of the trade here, when you're downloading an asset like an archival newspaper that was scanned in, you wanna make sure whatever you're using was scanned in at a very high resolution. So we have our JPEGs here, and then we have another size JPEG here as well. These are all pretty small, but when you download the PDF, that is going to give you your best shot of having really a best quality for what you can find here on this website. So just wanted to show you guys that, and now we will jump into After Effects. So we're in After Effects here, and what we're gonna do first is we're gonna take our newspaper articles and we are going to bring them in all in After Effects. And we are going to put them in the order in which we want. I already looked at these, so I know the order in which I want these uh, newspapers to be. I wanna start off with this one. I'm just gonna bring this down here. Now, I know we're gonna be focusing on this word battleship. This is, uh, it's all over the newspaper article, but this is the specific battleship word I wanna focus on. So what I'm gonna do is actually press Y and bring my anchor point up until it's right here in the middle of the word. That way, all of the animation and um, any of the changes we make will actually all originate from this anchor point here. So that's why we're doing that. So we're gonna do that for these next articles. I wanna this time focus on uh, this headline and I'm gonna do the same thing. Bring my anchor point tool up bring it to the middle, then this last one. Here, I'm gonna do the same thing, and we're gonna bring it up to this headline as well. Put it right there in the middle. Awesome. So now we have our three articles. So the next thing we need to do is actually stack them on top of one another so they're all a match cut and they're quick flashes. But before we get there, I wanna show you guys a quick trick of the trade that is going to make a night and day difference with any digital asset that you're working with. So. We'll go here to our top article. We'll just focus on this for now. So you notice that the, the more that I scale, the worse the quality gets. And that's because this is a digitally scanned image. It's similar to scaling it a lot on a photo or video. There is a way to combat this. And how to do that is by clicking this icon here, which is to continually rasterize this layer. So as soon as we click it, as you see, this is before, this is after, and what this is doing is helping us preserve some of that quality. So when I hover over the icon here, you, it talks about um, how this is actually really used for vector layers, which is really what it's meant for, but it also works for digitally scanned items. So just keep that in mind, and we're gonna select this for all of our digitally scanned assets. So the next thing we're gonna do is find a way to frame up all of our battleship words, because they're kind of all over the place, they're um, in, and they're in different articles. And what we wanna do is put them in the same section of our frame so we can have quick flash cuts between one another. So the best way to do that is to create a proportional grid. So I'm gonna click here and I'm gonna click proportional grid. And right here you see these bright lime green lines and this is gonna allow me to basically put the word battleship where I want it to be. Now, if you don't know how to get these grid lines, I just showed you right here. Um, you click here and you go to proportional grid. Yours might look different. So let me just quickly show you how to get a rule of thirds proportional grid. I'm gonna to go to edit, preferences, and then I'm gonna to go to grids and guides. And now when I'm in here, you see that you can pick any color that you want. And for the proportional grid, I went three and three. When you go with three and three, you actually have a rule of thirds grid. So uh, if you're not familiar with the rule of thirds, it's a very popular photography design, creative principle, if you will. Look into it, it's super important. I'm scaling in here and I just want Battleship to be smack dab in the center, like that. 
So I'm gonna actually use our rulers now and this is how you find them. You just make sure that it's selected on and I'm going to bring these down right above and right below the B. So now I'm creating basically a set of guidelines that I want this word to live in. That way when we cut between each word, it's gonna be really easy and it's gonna be really accurate. So we'll go to our next and we're gonna scale in. And we went from the top here. So every font is gonna be different. Every digitally scanned item is gonna be different. Uh, every newspaper is gonna be different. There's a lot of differences between everything. And what I can do here is just kind of go between the two and see like, okay, mm, I don't know how that looks. I can also go to this top one, drop the opacity and see, okay, well maybe with this one underneath, I'm gonna click R for the rotation and maybe actually rotate it a little bit, see if that helps. That might not help, but I'm just uh, toying with this to see what looks good. And essentially what I want, especially when you have different font types like this, I want all of the edges, at least on this very left side of this proportional grid to be aligned. So if I can get any sort of satisfaction with this, it's going from here to here, just like that. All right, so we have our three here. Now, of course, this with this first one being case sensitive, it's gonna look different compared to our other ones, but I'm honestly okay with that. We want it to look different. These aren't all supposed to be from the same newspaper at the same time in history. So I'm okay with those differences. So next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to zoom in here and then I'm gonna go to eight frames, alt, out bracket, bring it in. And then I'm gonna go right click, keyframe assistant, sequence layers, click okay. And now, when I click here, it's all the same. It looks really cool. Now what we're gonna do is actually pre-compose this. So I'm gonna highlight all of these, right click, pre-compose, and call this match cuts working. I'll bring this over to my working folder. We'll go here, we're gonna trim this comp to the work area here so it's only one second long. Uh, the reason I went with eight frames is because we are working in a 24 frame per second timeline. When I go eight frames with three layers, that allows for very precise cuts of one third of a second. So that's why we went with eight frames for this. Okay, next thing I'm gonna do is right click, go to time, enable time remapping. Gonna zoom in here, go to our last keyframe, Click page up, set another keyframe, delete that last one, alt click, and type in an expression loop out. If, and if you've seen any of my other tutorials, you know I love using this expression. It's really simple. And what this will do now is it will allow this to all loop out. And perhaps in what you're working on, you might have tons of examples. You might not even need to loop out, but just because we're working with three different newspapers this is why I decided to do that. So this is actually the first part in how to align all of your different newspaper article words for a perfect match cut. So on to the next part. All right, the next part is the stylizing portion. This is probably my favorite part of doing anything related to this matter. So what I'm gonna do is go into our match cuts working folder and we see we have you know, three very different looking newspaper articles, which as I mentioned before is totally okay, but there is one thing I wanna change and that is actually the brightness and overall contrast of these. So this is really bright. This first one's really bright. This last one's really bright. The second one, it's a, it's a little bit faint. So what I'm gonna do here is add a levels effect. And then I'm going to brighten this up. And I might even make this a little bit more contrasty, yeah. So this is before, this is after, and this is just gonna make things look a lot more similar, and this will all make sense in a second. So now what we wanna do is add our highlighter effect. So what I'm gonna do is click on our pen tool, and I'm going to drop our stroke down to let's say 20 for now. We'll leave the fill at nothing, and I'm gonna click here, hold down shift and click here. All right, and what we're gonna do is actually bring up the stroke, bring it up, bring it up, bring it up. And I'm gonna bring down the opacity just to see how this looks right now, outside all of these words. So 
these two battleship boards actually look just a lot smaller in height compared to this first one. So I might actually bring the scale down just a little bit as well. Yeah, that looks good. And then I'm going to shorten up the stroke. Perfect. Now, in case you're wondering, this is the shade of yellow, like the hex code that I'm using and whatnot. Uh, you could use any shade. Um, this is just the one that I'm using for this tutorial. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is change our blend mode from normal to multiply. Now we can actually see it and it looks like a highlighter. But um, like I said, there's still a little bit of spillover and I still wanna keep working on this. So I'm gonna just bring down the stroke a little bit more. Doesn't have to be perfect. I know that this letter P here, since it is lowercase, it's gonna be dropped off. It's, it's not gonna be perfect, but um, once again, that's okay. And then this right here, I'm gonna bring this down a little bit to better fit within, the sh within our highlighter, same with this one. Now what we need to do is actually stylize and then animate our highlighter stroke. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna stylize it. And to do that, we're going to, we'll just leave it on the actual layer for now and we will label this highlighter. And then we will add a rough and edges. So right away you could tell this had some rough edges, but what uh, we're gonna play around with these parameters here and make it look like when you see like a marker being drawn. It's not always a perfect edge like it is digitally. So there, it's it's always imperfect. And the next thing we're gonna do uh, to stylize this is we're going to add a turbulent displace because not everyone draws perfect lines. And as you can see right away, this looks really weird. So we're gonna make this look a little bit more straight but not perfectly straight. So I'm gonna bring this down to let's say 10. And then we're gonna bring this amount to let's say 44. All right, this is looking better. Before the effects and this is after. So it's super subtle, but um, it does make a big difference. And the more you get along in your After Effects career, you're gonna learn how to make things imperfect or make things just seem more realistic. And this is one of those tricks that you can apply to lots of different things. All right, next thing we need to do is animate. And what we're gonna to do to animate these is add a trim paths. So I'm gonna go here, go to add, add trim paths. I'm gonna start at zero. Then I'm gonna set a keyframe and go to 100. I'm gonna bring this to the very end here. I'm gonna click on both keyframes, click F9 to easy ease. So here's what we have. Looking good. But what I wanna do is actually alter this easing a little bit. So I wanna start off really fast and then taper off a little bit with the actual speed. So I jumped into my graph editor here and I'm just gonna drag this handle across. So you can see it's gonna start off fast and then it's going to taper off. Nice. Now, because we started, uh, because we're looping our newspapers, the actual highlighter is going to loop itself too because it's in the same composition. And we don't really need that for this. Um, so I'm actually going to uh, control X, take this out and just paste it into here and extend that out. So that way the actual highlighter stays on for the entire time while the newspapers are looping. All right, the next part to stylize this is we have a highlighter, we have our match cuts. What we're gonna do next is actually create a vignetted blur to help bring the attention to the word battleship. So I'm going to duplicate our working layer and I'm going to just put blur after. And what I'm gonna do is add a camera lens blur. I will set this to 10. And then I'm going to create a mask here. And then I'm going to subtract that mask. And then I'm gonna feather this out by let's say 50. Now if I go up too high, it's gonna actually impact our word. You see it kind of looks a little bit blurry again. So we'll go down to like, let's say 100. And then I'm going to change the mask expansion here. So you see it now I'm impacting some of the nearby letters. Um, and that's just what the expansion does.
now we're going to add our last bit of sauce. And in order to do that, we're going to go to layer, new, adjustment layer. We will add a curves effect. We will bring this up here, make this a lot brighter. We're gonna label this layer flicker. We'll go to our opacity, alt click, and we will type in wiggle 50 comma 10. And what this is gonna do is actually add a, a bit of a um, actual overall flicker like you would see in a, in a film grain that you'd use online. So the next thing we're gonna do is add a little bit of digital camera movement. And in order to do that, we're going to go to layer, new adjustment layer, and we will label this transform. And we will add a transform effect. And from here, what we're gonna do is click alt on the position, and we will put wiggle 0.5 comma one. What this is gonna do is create just a little bit of subtle camera movement. I'm gonna change these values just so you can see what this looks like if this were if these were higher. This is a little too crazy, but um, you're getting the point that there's a little bit of camera movement with um, creating these values. And even if we wanted to change this to 10, when you use values like this, it animates the speed followed by the amount. So 0.5 followed by 10. That's how you make a fun match cut newspaper article animation. Let me know what you think in the comments about today's tutorial. Thanks for watching and stay creative.